Well, hello, Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to my shack. And, um, right, um, no filters today, <laughs> I promised. Um, um, and I, I, we'll get on to what we're going to uh, be building um, uh, in just a minute. Um, but uh, just to say, first of all, um, the reason I do these YouTube videos um, uh, originally was because I did some talks at some amateur radio clubs via Zoom and, and people started taking an interest and that's why I started making more of these videos. Um, and so it was just to say, um, if you're a member of uh, an amateur radio club um, and you would like me to, to come and speak to your club via Zoom, um, then please get in touch. And uh, I, I've, I've done a uh, lots of talks about different kind of um, home brewing adventures and stuff that I, I, I've built um, from um, you know more in-depth stuff to, 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 to quite often a lot of um, very basic stuff really just to, to try and encourage people that um, that haven't really had much experience or haven't really had a go at home brewing before to, to give it a bash you know so but if you'd like me to, 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 to come and do that I usually talk for about an hour and then we have questions and, and whatever, but I can fit in uh, around whatever. So if, if you uh, want to do that, uh, please hit me up uh, on the email address, which is uh, going to be before you now. Uh, and it's also on my qrz.com page as well. Right, on to today. Um, I've been hitting the books recently, um, dipping back into this um, <laughs> hallowed sacred tome, <laughs> Experimental Methods and RF Design. Um, which is, you know, not not the smallest read, and not really a, a beginner's read either. I would have to say, um, but um, it's a kind of book you you kind of dip in and out of, and you can return to it. And there's always loads of stuff there. Um, and there's a, a particular design I thought I'd have a play with because I am in the process of building very slowly this time um, uh, another uh, radio. Now, the reason it's taken me so long to build this next radio is because I keep stopping to make YouTube videos about it <laughs> just saying um, um, but um, which is fine it's, it's fine but um, yeah so it's going to be uh, a transceiver for 17 meters which is not something I've, 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 I've built anything for before um, and if you've seen some of the other previous videos you'll you'll know I've built crystal filters and um, bandpass filters etc for for that um, but I'm thinking of the, the central section the IF section and and some IF amplification I don't know what I'm going to do whether I'm going to have an AGC or there there or not I'm not not decided yet um, and I thought I'd play around with some different things so um, uh, I, I found in experimental methods in RF design uh, a very simple little um, RF amplifier that you can use um, and it, although it's not uh, like a termination insensitive amplifier, like I, I put in the in the the, <laughs> the red rig behind you, um, it, it kind of gets around that a little uh, bit because it puts in um, a pi attenuator, which which gives you a good fifty ohms um, uh, uh, impedance on 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 the end there. So um, let me show you the schematic, and you'll see what I mean. I'm not showing you the actual page from EMRFD for copyright reasons, but I've transcribed the schematic. And as you can see, it's very simple. It's based around one transistor, uh, 2N3866, which I happen to have a few of. They're a bit more um, a beefy metal can design, so that they take a bit more juice. It's arranged as a common emitter amplifier with feedback um, coming through this 1.5k resistor and the collector is inductively loaded so there's no resistor this is just a current limiting resistor here but the the actual collector load comes from this transformer and um, I've transcribed some of the the notes that are in the text here now be because the collector needs to see 200 ohms at AC it, it sees that um, at DC, of course, uh, it doesn't, and the, the, the power just passes straight through. Um, but at AC, uh, it, it does. And um, by tapping it in the middle, actually, the output sees 50 ohms, which is, is great. And the transformer is actually 10 by Filar turns on an FT3743. 
And now it's got a 6 dB pad and, and this is not because we particularly want to knock the, the power of the, the signal down. It's just that it gives us an excuse to get a 50 ohms termination here and, and these little pi attenuators are, are great for that, for stabilising the, the impedance at a, at a port. Because the thing with this kind of feedback amplifier is, is, is if for some reason you mess with the impedance uh, at the output, that will be reflected back and will, will change the impedance at the input and vice versa. Now to counteract that, we've got this little pad and what that will do, it will act as a buffer. So if you've say got a crystal filter hanging on the other end of this 6 dB pad, and the impedance you know, is, is not a pure 50 ohms resistive, which is what we want. Because of this pad here, it will kind of insulate the, the output of the amplifier fr from some of that, uh, which is really good. But um, So if we can keep the output stable, hopefully that will mean that the, the input will be more stable as well. And, and you, Because if the, input's, if the output's not stable uh, in terms of its impedance, if it changes the input impedance, that means you'll get reflected signal. And why that's bad is if, if you've got a mixer on this end, you'll reflect signal back into your mixer, which means you'll get uh, intermodulation products and, and things which will mix with other things as well. And it'll be a right old mess, basically. So, so it's a nice, simple circuit um, with just a, a 6 dB pad on the end of it. So what I did is I, 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 I drew round the board I'm going to use and designed where I thought I was going to put my little engraved pads and you'll, you'll see more about this uh, in a moment. This is where I'm going to put the components. I didn't even bother drawing them on this time I just uh, because it's such a simple circuit but that's where I'm going to uh, kind of um, uh, place all the components. Made sure I um, <laughs> did a pin out for the transistor. This is looking from the bottom of the transistor up towards um, at the top, as it were, from, from the bottom looking up. And I, I just draw your attention to this, um, because you might think, well, why would I use such a large board for such a small circuit? Well, the writers of EMRFD comment that a better solution is actually to use two of these feedback amplifier stages with attenuation in between. Uh, and, and it says impedances are stable and the noise figure and the intercepts are maintained. So I might try that. I'm going to build it exactly as it is for now, but I've left a bit of space because it will give me space to build another amplifier on the other end and um, uh, have a bit of a kind of um, 6 uh, dB sandwich, as it were, <laughs> with, the, with two amps on either side. But um, that's um, for another day. So there, that is the schematic. Uh, this is uh, what it's going to look like on the board. Uh, and um, so um, let's get building. Well, welcome to the new bench. How exciting. Right, okay, so here is um, my schematic that we saw before. And what I've done is I've got my usual, this is, if you've seen my videos before, it's the same technique as usual. So single-sided copper clad board, FR4. Um, gone over that with a very fine, um, uh, steel wool uh, just to uh, to take the lacquer off it and uh, just tested that with the uh, the multimeter to make sure that um, you've got a good uh, conductive uh, ground plane on there. Um, then what I've tried to do um, as far as possible is I've transferred um, my design of where I'm going to put my pads onto the actual board and I did that using uh, these things. Now I've had these for years um, these were the pens that I used to write on CD-ROMs. <laughs> Remember those? <laughs> but you could use anything Sharpies or anything that's going to um, uh, not rub off, um, uh, which is great. So what I'm going to do now um, is get dremeling and uh, engrave uh, all these um, uh, little uh, isolated pads that I'm going to use to uh, to make my connections. Right, OK, well, I've got busy with the Dremel. And um, as you can see, I've engraved all these little um, conductive pads. And if I hold it around, you can see the light shining through, which is a good sign, where I've removed the copper on the other side. Um, but it's really important, once you've done it, 
go over it with a magnifying glass first. Uh, just make sure you've got no little traces of copper that might be shorting out to ground or shorting across to another pad. Then go over it with a multimeter and, uh, and make sure that they are, in fact, electrically isolated from one another. Um, and then you're good to go. Um, so what I'm going to do now is populate the board. So I've gathered together all the components that I need, um, and this is just a representative sample. Uh, and I'm not going to show you the um, the whole construction process because that would be very boring. <laughs> um, but essentially, what I'm going to do is uh, go through the board. I'm going to tin all these pads. So I've got something to work on. Um, and what I do, so I take for instance the capacitor. So this is the capacitor which is going between here and here. So it doesn't. It's not a massive gap. So I I, I bend the leads back and uh, and splay them out and and then i'll cut them off um to the right size and uh kind of hold hold one leg and then uh, solder the other leg in and then push it down and, and do the other one and uh, that seems to work pretty well um it's probably just worth so the resistors you pretty much just lie them down and a number of them are grounded on, on one end anyway, so that's not uh, too much of a problem. Yeah, the only thing worth really commenting on, uh, other than the, the, the transistor, um, which uh, you can't actually, what I was gonna do, I was gonna um, put a bit of um, uh, the, the, the heat sink glue, the stuff that I, I put transistors onto heat sinks with when I'm building PAs, I'd put a blob of that on there and, and do it upside down. Uh, but I'd have to be very careful um, that it was uh, insulated because that uh, can, that metal can, um, uh, is is electrically connected to the collector, which we certainly don't want at ground potential. So that would mess things up. So in the end, I decided I, I would not do that. Um, it does mean I've got to bend uh, one of the, the base as uh, I'm going to bend it across but that's fine, um, and I'll, I'll make a bit of a job of that and um, uh, and uh, chop those leads down. Uh, but yeah, the, the thing that needs some comment, I suppose, is the um, the transformer. So uh, now really I need to do a whole separate video on doing these, but, but very briefly, um, it's 10 turns of bifilar wound enameled copper wire so this is the stuff this is if you can see the, the red and the green strands which are kind of separate um, but are kind of glued together uh, and so how i wind them um, is i cut off a length of this stuff um, i separate the ends the red and the green ends on both ends of this this strand um, i will put one end into the vice <laughs> here and um, and what I'll do then um, I'll secure that in the vice uh, and then what I'll do is I'll hold the other end um, with um, one of these clamps and then literally I will just twist it twist it twist it twist it, and you'll see the turns going on onto this uh, uh, wire and it will become quite taut uh, as well, obviously, as you get the turns on it. Um, and then, uh, when you're happy that you've got you know lots of turns on, there are ratios for how many turns you put on per inch and everything, but to be honest, I, I've been doing this so long, or it feels like I've been doing this so long, uh, I kind of just do the same amount. Don't ask me how many it is. I, I'm, next time, I'll measure it. Um, but uh, uh, that looks about right. Um, and then um, uh, feed it through and... Um, and twist it. Now, the, the advantage of having um, uh, two different colours is you can see which one goes where because um, actually what's really important uh, with the transformers is that actually you get the phasing right. Now, these dots, and you can't see because so I've been scribbling things out, but these dots are phasing dots. So this is the same end. So actually, I changed my mind here, but I, I'm going to start with, this is the green wire and this is the red wire. So if you look at it, uh, the power supply comes in through the top green wire, but the bottom green wire, this is the bottom end, connects to the top red wire. So the bottom green goes to the top red, and the bottom red goes to the collector of the, uh, of the transistor. So that's what you do. So you actually 
uh, take those wires, one from the top and one from the bottom, and solder them together. Um, you, you scrape them, tin them, and, uh, and then I checked it. I mean, if you check it with a multimeter, you'll get like, I don't know, five ohms or something uh, through it because uh, it's um, very little resistance to DC. Um, but if you've got a peak LCR meter, as I have, which is a very, very useful device, um, you can actually look at what it's meant to be. And if you look uh, back here, um, the collector's supposed to be seeing 200 ohms, um, but we want um, 50 ohms out, which is, is going to come out to the 6 dB pad. And sure enough, if you put it on the, um, the LCR meter, um, and uh, mine wasn't reading high enough, so I had to squish the turns together, you increase the inductance, but also you increase the impedance. So that is just under 200 ohms, um, measuring from the, the top to the bottom. And the midpoint here uh, is 50 ohms. Uh, which is ideal, so um, or just under 50 ohms, but, but close uh, enough. Right, okay, so that's enough for this waffle. Um, I'll see you after I've um, populated the board. Right, okay, well, here is the finished product. And um, you can see I've just uh, connected some temporary uh, SMA connectors on the RF in and out and put the uh, power cable in. Um, and uh, and there it is. Um, I after I soldered it all up, I went through and checked with the multimeter, and I'm glad I did. I tell you because um, I found one mistake. Um, that resistor, which is um, going diagonally on just on the kind of top left hand side of the transistor, there um, was not soldered in right and was skewing all the resistances. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, that's what you have to watch out for. So I'm pleased I did that because it's worth spending a bit more time now while the soldering iron is hot and uh, I'm at the bench um, rather than when I'm uh, in the house later um, testing it on the scope. So um, yeah, uh, it was worth doing that. So yeah, oh, uh, now you, you're probably thinking, why have I got such a big piece of board really? Um, well, I um, refer you back to that comment that um, experimental methods and RF design says about um, a better solution is two feedback amp stages with attenuation between. And actually, that's probably what I'm going to try doing. So that's just the single one with the amp, and that's the uh, the uh, the pi attenuator uh, there. These three resistors, um, but I've got plenty of room on there um, to build um, another amp. So, and that's probably what I will do once I've had a play around with this one and, and see how it works. Um, uh, which leads me to the next stage. This is where the fun really begins because the, the next stage is the smoke test. Oh yeah, be afraid, be very afraid. See you in a moment. Right, okay, so are you ready for the moment of truth? Um, I've got it connected to um, my power supply, which is going to put 12 volts through it. Three, two, one. No smoke. Fantastic. Um, and in actual fact, um, I confess, I did this before. <laughs> um, but it's nice to know there's still no smoke. Uh, so actually, if you look here, um, it's pulling 60 milliamps. And actually, um, it does get a bit warm. Uh, now that's... Uh, on spec um, and these um, transistors are intended to take um, uh, you know a bit more juice through them uh, but I'm thinking actually uh, it, it, after a while it gets a bit warm I think I probably want to put a heat sink on that um, okay so now uh, there's lots of different tests uh, that we can run and measurements that we can make on this amplifier I'm just going to do one now which is gain so we're going to measure the gain of the amplifier um, uh, with the uh, with the the six dB pad on it, um, and uh, and I'm going to show you two different ways. This is just two different ways that I use to measure the gain of it. Now the first way uh, uses uh, signal generator and 
an oscilloscope. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the uh, the signal from the sig gen through the amplifier and then um, uh, measure the uh, the voltage um, on the oscilloscope um, uh, coming out the other side. So what I've done is, if you can see there, I've got a uh, a signal at 13.3 megahertz because that's my IF. Uh, and that was uh, those of you that saw the video about the crystal filter will know that that's what the crystal filter is built for. Um, and uh, there's a hundred millivolts peak to peak uh, going through that, um, which in an ideal world would mean I've got uh, 50 millivolts um, down here, but I've only got 33.2 or 33.6. Um, so that's losses uh, in the in this cable, no doubt. That's probably also a measure of the accuracy of the signal coming out of the sig gen i think as well um and that's going through a, a into a, a 50 ohm load into the oscilloscope but that doesn't actually matter all that much as long as we use the same setup um we've just got to compare like for like so um you get it set up like this so you're just connecting the sig gen straight to the uh, oscilloscope uh, and write that down um so 33.6 say so it's 33.6 millivolts I'll write that down uh, because now what we're going to do is we're going to compare so that's just the signal uh, as it's being seen through a 50 ohm load uh, by the oscilloscopes and we're now going to measure the uh, the waveform um, through the amplifier with the amplifier switched on okay well now uh, I've got it going through um, from the sig gen coming through now through the amplifier through the 60 db pad and then back out through the 50 ohm load and into the oscilloscope and you can see there we'll call that 100 and, well 180 let's say 180 millivolts um, so it's nice clean sine wave uh, as it was going going in so no distortion there uh, which is really good so um so write that down 180 millivolts and when you've written that down it's time to do a bit of maths now apologies for my um my scrawling um on a odd bit of paper here but um so this is what you need to do so we've got um the two figures so that was the uh the figure that we started off with the 33.6 millivolts that was just coming straight from the sig gen and that was the the peak to peak voltage that we measured on the scope through the, the 50 ohm load. And then the 180 millivolts was through the amplifier and uh, the, the 6 dB uh, attenuator. So we want to calculate the power uh, uh, to, to, to find out what the, uh, the, the gain is. So, um, and no, you, you can do it with voltage, but I, I prefer to do it with power. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we need, uh, because power is um, the voltage, the RMS voltage squared over the resistance, which in our case is, is 50 ohms. So before we get to that, um, we need to calculate um, the, uh, the RMS voltage. So the RMS voltage is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage divided by two, so that gets it down to just the peak voltage, and then times 0 0.7071, and that will give you your um, uh, RMS uh, voltage. Um, and if you do that, I've done this up here, you end up with um, 11.88 and 63.64 uh, millivolts, respectively. So when you plug those RMS voltages in, um, so uh, you, you square them and divide each one by 50, um, then you get um, 2.2 microwatts, uh, sorry, 2.82 microwatts. That was just the signal on its own with no amplification. And then 81 microwatts, um, which uh, is the signal through the amplifier. So that's actually... Um, uh, a, a multiplication of of twenty eight point seven two times, um, and when you convert that, um, so um, 
10 log um, 28.72 uh, will give you your, your, the, the value in decibels, uh, which is uh, 14.58. Um, so uh, 14 and a half. Uh, and actually, um, if uh, we remember what we were actually aiming for, uh, gain uh, is 21 dB, 15 dB with the pad. Now, remember, we're actually um, uh, measuring that with the pad. So 14 and a half, um, it, that's pretty good. So that's pretty much what it's uh, intended to be. Um, so uh, uh, that's one way in which you can uh, measure and calculate um, uh, the gain through your amplifier. And the other way I often use, and it's, it's good to use more than one way because you can just kind of, you know, check your measurements that way, um, is to use uh, the SIGGEN once again. So exactly the same setting, sine wave, 100 millivolts, peak to peak, 13.3 megahertz. And um, uh, this little device, the Tiny SA, Tiny Spectrum Analyzer. And uh, let me just let me get this in focus. Marvellous. So you'll see there, that is our signal um, at minus 22.8 dBm. So this is a direct power measurement there. So that's a dBs with a, a reference to a milliwatt. So... Um, Minus 22.8, so write that down. That's the uh, the power of uh, of your signal that's just coming from the SIG gen. Right, okay, and now this is uh, the reading through the amplifier and the, uh, the 6 dB pad, minus 8.3 dBm. And uh, if you do that simple... Um, subtraction, um, minus 22.8 dBm, uh, and you take from that um, at minus 8.3 dBm, that means that you have a gain of, guess what, 14.5 dBm. So, um, yeah, exactly what we got with uh, the other method of calculating it. So that's good. So I think we can trust those measurements. Okay, well, I hope that was of some interest to you and if I do um, build uh, a matching amplifier uh, on there and uh, I'll let you know how that goes and how that works out um, and um, if there are other things that you're interested in, uh, in, in me making videos about then by all means um, you know leave a comment or, or, or get in touch uh, can't promise to do it can't promise to do it quickly <laughs> <laughs> but also I'll, I'll certainly do my best um uh, somebody's already made a comment before about um would be interested in finding out a bit more about impedance matching different stages of your of of your radio and how all the different stages fit together which is is an interesting thing so maybe we uh, uh need to do something uh, around that but uh, in the meantime, um, it's getting close to Christmas now. I doubt very much if I'm going to get another one of these done um, uh, before then. So if I don't see you before, have a very, very happy Christmas and uh, a peaceful new year. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.